Welcome to the Jennifer Hudson Show, y'all. As you all know, March is Women's History Month, and here at J Hub Productions, we celebrate women all year long. Yes, we do. This month, we've learned about the history of women in music and entertainment, of course. We've met guests who are making women's history as we speak. Yes, we are. And we have given flowers and thanks to some of the incredible women in our audience, from friends to moms to bosses and everyone in between. Oh my goodness, as a woman in entertainment, I am so grateful to have a platform to uplift women all over the country. Yes, and yes, 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 y'all. It's a great thing to be a woman. I am also blessed to be able to empower and employ other women in the industry. That is a blessing. Here at the Jennifer Hudson Show, that's exactly what we've done. On this show, I get to work alongside some very smart, talented, and hardworking women in this business, baby. Yes, we do. So, yeah, I feel so lucky and I am so proud. So, before we close out Women's History Month, just know we make the history every day throughout the year, okay? Ladies, keep doing what you're doing. Keep being the heroes that you are because we do run the world. I had to throw that in there. Okay, but I want to highlight the amazing women on my staff and crew. So y'all, here's a, I can't call this a little family photo, but this is our little family photo. Do you see? Do you see all of these amazing women that help run the Jennifer Hudson show? I couldn't do it without y'all. I always say, as long as you have another woman around you to never feel alone and you will always have help, okay? And look at all the beautiful help that I have that supports me through this show. So I wanna say I love you guys. I appreciate you all, all of you out there, cause you're a part of it too. They make this machine work like nobody's business and you guys inspire me each and every day. So please keep up the amazing work. All right, y'all. Y'all ready to get this show started? Yeah. Our first guest is the creator and writer of the hit show Blackish. Now he's the executive producer of the BET Plus show, Diara from Detroit. Please welcome King of Barrys. to have you here. Thank you oh, for being I'm so here. so happy to be here. I'm nervous. You're nervous? I'm always nervous. All the <laughs> I stuff live nervous. you do. Yeah. <laughs> nervous is a good thing, right? It is. It means you care. It means you care and you're passionate about what you do. I am. I am. Is that how you become so successful? <sighs> I think there's a lot of blessings in that, a lot of luck, um, a lot of good team people around me. I think it takes a lot of village and I've been really, from my parents to God to everybody, so. Yeah. No, nope. that makes sense. It takes, <laughs> like you said, it takes a village. Cause you're an incredible media mogul, and you started in medical school. Or I wanted studying? to go to medical school. I wanted to be a doctor. My my wife is a uh, is a doctor, and I, I I realized very quickly when I took organic chemistry that that was not going to be my path. <laughs> ah. <laughs> How did you get into entertainment then? Um, so. My kid's mom, she, uh, her, her uncle was a guy, Ralph Farquhar. Mm -hmm. He had uh, created a show called Moesha. Oh. And then a lady, Felicia My Henderson. Uh -huh. um, they really took me under their wing and I got in there and I got in a Paramount Writers Training Program mm -hmm. and just learned on Soul Foods. And that was my first like real, real writing job. Went from there and just, you know, started PAing and writing and writing and writing. And, Start selling pilots and just really just, you know, God really blessed me. Man, did he bless you. you <laughs> so when you started out that way, did you ever think you would achieve so much? No, not in a, not in a million years. That is awesome. I look up and I'm like, what? No, so wow. I'm very, very happy. So, okay, you used to be a PA, right? Mm -hmm. So now do you like cast or work with people that you were once a PA for? Yes. Um, Tia Mowry, I was her, I was bringing her her lunch. Her and <laughs> Whoa. And we, 
it every day. And just a lot of people, like it's, you know, you grow up in this. I actually grew, you know, came out of college and I actually grew up in this and I got to see everybody. And I always feel like that's the best way I tell people if you want to get into it. Um, because being a PA and coming up, like you respect everybody's job. Mm -hmm. And you know that you know it. Like mm -hmm. this doesn't go unless every single person does their job. It's teamwork. And it really, really is. And it you learn really to respect is. it. And I work with people who don't have that, yeah. and it's not the same environment. Yeah. Like, I look like you guys have a family here, Thank you. and I feel like that really makes a big difference. Thank you for that. Thank <laughs> you, because you would definitely know. <laughs> and you also got to work with a dear friend of mine, or you got to meet him, Norman Lear. Oh, my God. He was my guy. He was my guy. Like, what was it like? When did you get to first meet him? So he came when we were doing the Blackish pilot. Somehow ABC hooked us up. Yeah. And he came, and another big producer, black producer would make a show, really didn't support me. Ah. And he came and Norman really made, he like was like, this is special. And he made other people kind of take, take note early. Yeah. And I really think it helped Blackish blow up in the way that it did. And he would give me advice and he would talk to me about, you know, work life, family life balance and, you know, talking about stuff, you know, how important it is to talk about stuff <laughs> from, uh, um, oh my God. <laughs> um, talk about stuff from like a, um, you know, what's inside and not be afraid to tell stories, you know what I'm saying? And that the best stories really come from real life. And that's what, that's what a family show should be about because people really learn about the world from their family. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, so many shows had stopped doing that and we were like, why? And so I, know I really got to work with those people for almost a decade and tell those stories. And I really feel like Norman was a big part of that. Yes, he was. I miss him so much. God that. rest his soul. He, got a, he had a good run, though. He did. <laughs> he did. He changed the game, and he inspired people like yourself and myself, because I got to work with him on the Jefferson's Live, and I uh, sang for his I quite a few of his birthday events. You were there <laughs> as well, yes. So he was a dear friend of mine, like you said. OK, now you are going to remake The Wizard of Oz. Yeah. <laughs> It's a wonderful life. Like, those are some classics. So do you feel the pressure in doing that? Absolutely. I feel like, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, we took years chasing that piece yeah. of IP because it was, you know, it's never, it's been done once. And, you know, those kind of movies, if you do them right, they last for yes. years. But, like, there was an underlying story behind it. You know what I'm saying? It was dealing with mental illness mm -hmm. and just, you know, depression and... and you know, wanting, someone wanting to do things and always feeling like they couldn't have it. And like a lot of things that I think a lot of us go through. And so to have a chance to do that over, I think that might be the next movie I work on. It is, you know, something I'm hoping I get, you know, someone I want to work with, but I just want to do that. I would love it to last as long as that movie did. You know I'm so? sure it will. I'm and sure it will. This is awesome. Where will It's a Wonderful Life be set? We want to set it in Savannah, Georgia. Oh, okay. That is awesome. I have to ask you this. How do you determine what projects that you want to do? Because there's so much out there. Like, how do you narrow it down? Well, now I think it's, it's gotten to the point where I'm, I'm lucky enough to sort of say, I'll, I really want to work on the stuff that I want to work on mm -hmm. um, or find voices like they are, like, you know, people that I really feel like I, they can go and take it all the way. So I think really it's like less is more now, mm -hmm. but I want to do stuff that I feel like if I do it, it can make an impact. Yeah. And it can last, you know what I'm saying? And I feel like that is, and I really want to, I love doing projects around my people, people of color, but I like them to reach everybody. Right. You know what I'm saying? I think that is like, you know, the, the, the best success, you know, Hollywood, the best success is a green. Mm -hmm. And so I want our stuff to make money. I want our stuff to have a lot of people come. I think that's really important. Um, and I want to tell our stories from a real authentic place. Mm -hmm. And I don't think the two have to be mutually exclusive. I think you can tell things from an authentic place and they can still make money. And so... I think that's moving forward kind of where my head is at. You're doing just that. Will you stick around for yeah. a little bit? <laughs> All right, well, with Kenya, we'll be right back. We're back with iconic Kenya Barris. Diara, so you executive produce Diara from Detroit. Tell everyone what it's about. Um, it is a murder mystery or a mystery wrapped inside of a comedy, wrapped inside of an enigma, wrapped inside of the amazing mind of Diara Kilpatrick. Mm. She is... Um, such an amazing writer and star of the show. She came and she had an idea. And I'm like, I haven't heard this before. And it's coming from a black girl. And she is a true, true daughter of Detroit. Um, you know, Kwame Kilpatrick. <laughs> Detroit. Uh, Kwame Kilpatrick, the ex-mayor of Detroit, was her, was her brother. You know what oh. I'm saying? She is from, like, from, from Detroit. And Detroit is a, plays an amazing backdrop and character part of this, this show. 
And I feel like we got such an amazing cast. Uh, um, and it's, it's, I'm, I'm so happy to be a part of it. That's awesome. I got to meet her not too long ago, and she is an amazing young she lady. She really is. She is. I'm so serious. She really is. Can't wait to see what more she does in the future. Or maybe okay. she'll write something for you. Oh, maybe she'll write something for me. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, my goodness. There you go. <laughs> Clap for that. Okay. Now, you created, directed, you write all of these things. So you, you write so much and create so much. Do you ever have imposter syndrome? I don't not ever have the posture. Not at, oh, okay, that's I, good. I live in like, oh my God, they're gonna find out. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that's what kind of drives you, you know yeah. what I'm saying? The idea of, I think that every time, anytime people, for me, that I start seeing, they just know that, they, that their thing is the thing, that's when you start to have a fall off. Mm -hmm. I think you always have to feel like, when you turn the script in, they're gonna hate it, they're gonna hate it, they're gonna, mm -hmm. oh, they don't hate it. I feel like that's how you keep driving yourself to like, dot your I's and cross your T's. Um, and just so you know, stay humble and stay hungry. Yeah, yeah. That's how you stay successful, like you. <laughs> what is your TV guilty pleasures? Um, so... We wanna know what you watch. <laughs> I'm, I'm mad at myself for saying this, but um, I got caught in Love is Blind. Uh, we got a lot of Love is Blind lovers in the house. Everybody watches this. I got caught in it, and I was like, I'm not gonna watch this, and I was like, episode two. <laughs> Episode three, and episode, I was like, they made it together. Like, she like the quiet one, um, but I just got caught in it. And but I think that there's something about like, I, if you want to believe in love, you want to believe in like people can actually find that, and then yeah. you. So, but it was that's one of my guilty pleasures. Okay, you got any more that you watch? Um, What's another one? I love Secession. Mm. Um, <laughs> okay. Um, I love I love a lot of stuff. I feel like I uh, there's a one called Physical 100. Mm -hmm. That's like a <laughs> it's like a Korean. Mm, yes, yes. It's a Korean show that like they it's all in Korean, but it's like Squid Games meets like Survivor meets whatever. But I can't stop watching it. Like it's I'm like somebody's <laughs> so, gonna get hurt. So can... when you into it, you into it. <laughs> yeah. I understand that. Okay. And then wait, you got a 50th birthday coming up soon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, happy early birthday. Now, a few years ago, you said you wanted to be semi-retired mm -hmm. by 50. Is that still your plan? Um, yes and no. I, I, I don't want to have to go to work in the same way. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I want to do, do, what I, do what I want to do in a different kind of way. Uh -huh. I feel like I really get to do what I love right now. When you do what you love, it doesn't feel like work. And I'm at that place. So I don't want it to start feeling like work. I want to feel like I can do it in a way that I really still enjoy it. All right. Uh, one thing. He got one thing. Go ahead. What's your one thing? I'm a, t I'm a tiny desk enthusiast. Okay. You like tiny desks. You didn't I, say that. I love tiny desks. I like I, tiny desks. I, 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 Scarface to me was my, one of my favorite. I want you uh -huh. to please come grace us with a tiny desk. I would. <laughs> I would love to do that. I, I think you would. Kill it. Oh my goodness. I think you would kill it. I think you would take us to church and back and everywhere else. I Thank think you. that literally your voice is a gift. Thank and I think you. to do that in that setting, people would love it. So I will watch it. Okay. Over, 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 over. Look for my tiny desk. <laughs> so Thank you for that. Will you come back again to see uh, us? Of course. And be at my tiny desk. I will. <laughs> the hour from Detroit is streaming now on BET Plus. We'll be right back. Our next guest is on a mission. She wants every woman and girl to know that they are worthy. Y'all, please welcome the incredible Jamie Kern Lima. In the happy place. In the happy place. Yes. I have to show you. I have, give her a hand. I have a bracelet on that says worthy yes. right now. Oh my goodness, that's Valencia Key. Oh my goodness. Yes, you would love her, Leah. Yes, design that, I love that. Oh my that. goodness, congratulations on your new book, Worthy. Yes. <laughs> it's amazing, can you tell us about it? Yeah, this is really, Worthy is for every person who has, um, some self-doubt to destroy and a destiny to fulfill. It's, it's really for every person who's ever doubted they're enough. Like right now, as you and I are talking, 80% um, of women don't believe they're enough. 
uh, uh, 75% of women in the workplace have imposter syndrome, 91% of girls and women don't love their bodies. So, uh, you know, the journey toward believing we're enough, it's really not about learning things. It's about like unlearning those lies mm. that lead to self-doubt. And um, so that's why I wrote this book. It's really for every person who's ever doubted they're enough and is ready to, uh, to unlearn the lie that they're not and to step into their full worth. I love that. Yeah. Unlearn yeah. the lie. Yeah. Yes. Woo. Right? Oh my goodness, and your energy is amazing. It fits the happy place. Oh, so I'm grateful to have you here. I really am. Okay, and then you wrote about meeting your childhood hero. Yes. You got that number, you had it for four years, and you didn't call. Y'all, that person was Oprah. <laughs> I know. Whew. This is why we're the, this is why us, every single one of us believing we are enough uh -huh. is so important, because when we don't, Right? When we maybe have, you know, done, worked really hard to accomplish things that have built self confidence, not, really, not realizing those things don't build self worth. Mm -hmm. What happens is we end up sabotaging things. I see a lot of people nodding. We end up staying stuck. And I had worked so hard, Jennifer, thinking I just need more self confidence in my life, mm -hmm. but I didn't realize what I need more of is self worth. So I was in this place in my life where from the time I was a little girl, I'd watch Oprah every single day in my living room. Like I dreamed one day of meeting her my whole life. <laughs> Fast forward 40 years, I'm running this incredible company. I have over a thousand employees. I'm you know, donating tens of millions of dollars to causes I believe. I'm very confident. But what I did not know was I didn't have a lot of self-worth. And I met Oprah, a 40 year dream happened. We had lunch and at the very end of it, she gave me her cell phone number. Mm -hmm. And she said, call me anytime. You can call me anytime. And I did not call her for four years. Four years. Four years. And I thought I knew why. I thought, I thought it was like, oh, I got to think of the perfect thing to say. Or, or everyone probably wants something, right? They want a car. They want, yeah. I'm like, I'm going to prove I don't need anything. Like, just I told myself stories until one day I realized the real reason I didn't call her, even though I was really confident, deep down inside, I did not believe I was worthy of being her friend. Wow. And so I sabotaged it for four years. And that day I realized the real reason was the day I turned down the volume on my self-doubt, turned up the volume on that knowing that knows I am worthy of being her. I'm a great friend, yes. right? Yes. And knows I'm worthy, knows every one of us is. That is the day I picked up the phone and called her. And literally, everything has changed since then. I taught a class alongside of her. Huh. But how close did I almost doubt myself out of my destiny. Right. And that's why I'm so passionate about this, because when I think about every person live right now with us, like it, so many of us doubt ourselves out of the person we're born to be. Mm. And like the mm. time for that has, mm. the time to end that is tough. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you for this. <laughs> we can right, y'all? Oh, we're going to rethink some things after this. OK, before we go to the break, I heard you got something you want to give us. I do. What you you cannot come to the happy place empty handed. So right. I so the book right so worthy right now is sold out almost everywhere in the country. Yes, it is. Uh, I worked to get 200 of uh, author copies. I signed every single one of them. Yeah. Everybody. Yeah. back with Jamie Carmima. Now this is a really good one. How do people we surround ourselves with impact our worthiness? Ooh, so if we could live our lives in the happy place 24-7, yes. that would be a good place yes, to live. That would be a good place to live. <laughs> but most of us, we have a lot of different people in our lives. Some of them are raised around, some are family. And it is so important to ask ourselves, is my circle a circle or more, does it feel more like a cage? Um, because, right, it, wow. it, it's, yeah and, yeah, and to really learn, and I go deep into worthy on how to do this, on how to curate your circle and still love people that you don't want to be like, peace mm -hmm. out, but mm -hmm. you want to love them from a distance. Mm -hmm. And one of, the, one of the big takeaways on how to do this right now in your life is just to think about uh, this idea of emotional residue. So you know when we eat Cheetos, we get orange on our hands, or when we drink a blue Slurpee, we get a blue tongue, that's physical residue. Well, when you're around people, you feel emotional residue. Like, have you ever walked into a room or, right, right? And you kind of you left the room and you're like, 
why do I feel like my soul is just crushed mm. around that, right? Uh, or the opposite, you're, you're here with Miss Jennifer Hudson and you're like, I feel good. I feel like I can talk in the world. You feel good. Right? Good. I want you to. That's emotional residue. Yes. And so it's important with the friends that you have in your life or, you know, the people even maybe as adults, a lot of us still want to make friends, but pay attention to what does that feel like? Like, what's that emotional residue feel like when I leave a room and, and try to curate your circle, not based on who's like-minded and thinks like you, but who's like-hearted. Like, who's I like -hearted, love that, like-hearted. Right? Yeah, yeah. We yeah. overlook that. We think of like-minded, but yes. like-hearted. Yes, I'm yes. keeping that one for myself. Oh my goodness, y'all better hold on to it too now. <laughs> You have such amazing insight and advice. So mm. I want to see if you can help any some of my, my audience members. Y'all want some help from her? Because yeah. I know I'm getting some. OK, so where is Michelle? There she is. Hi. How are you? Where are you from? I am from Pasadena, California. All right. <laughs> Tell us about yourself. Well, I am a mom at my age. And through a journey of 25 years, I was able to finally conceive. And um, the big thing is, now that I have him, he's a joy, I am trying to level up my life, transform myself. However, I feel like I'm living behind my weight. Mm. I am incredibly overweight. And I want to level up in my social and my career. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering, with a 14-day goal for myself that I put out there, what kind of reset actions mm -hmm. can I do to transform? Because I really feel your, your book, your, your spirit, everything that you stand for. And it just made me so happy just hearing your story right now. Mm -hmm. It gave me some hope mm -hmm. because I've been feeling crushed down my whole life with this weight. For the, it feels like forever. It's been like, uh, like four years, four and a half years. And so... I just wonder what can you do to help me just mm -hmm. pivot into my new self? Yes, yes. Well, can we put our hands together for Michelle? So, Jennifer, are you okay if I step up here for a second? Of course, please okay. do. Okay. Go for it. Okay. So, oh, the first thing I want to say to you um, is first of all, so right now, hello, can I give you a hug? Oh, <laughs> come here. <laughs> okay. Let me see where I'm going to make sure everyone at home hears. So here's the thing, okay? The first thing I want you to know, you're crying already, come here. So my entire life, there were decades I lost, not putting on a swimsuit, not raising my hand, not dancing at the party, right? Because I thought I needed to wait on my weight to be worthy. Mm. Okay, it's okay. Here's what I want to share with you first, okay? Uh, by the way, Building It Cosmetics, we just saw the highlight reel, but guess what? In that journey, there was an investor that literally said, no, he's not gonna invest because he didn't believe women would buy makeup from someone who looked like me with my body and my weight. Wow. Okay? And had I believed him, or had I believed my own self-doubt, I would have never built a billion dollar company because that is a lie, right? That is a lie. So here's what I wanna say to you, okay? The first thing I wanna say to you right now, 89% of girls and women opt out of meaningful activities in their life because they don't like how they look, they doubt themselves, they doubt their weight. I just want to start with one thing. Can I ask every single person in this audience to stand, if you are able, if you have ever doubted yourself because of appearance or weight or body? I want you to stand with your sister, Michelle, right here. Okay, okay, can you look around? Can you look around and see this? I want to ask everyone at home right now, Miss Jennifer standing, I'm standing, everyone at home right now, if you're in. able to stand in your living room, in your kitchen, okay? If you're with us in this doubt, everyone who works on the show, on the Miss Jennifer Hudson show, yes. look at how many of the people who work on the show are standing right now, okay? This is what I want you to see is you are not alone, and I want to give you two tools right now, okay? I want you to look around at this audience that's half crying right now, <laughs> but look at every single person in this audience. Do you believe they're beautiful when you look at them? Yes. Mm. You know it, right? Yes. Beyond a shadow of yes. a doubt. So the next time you look at yourself and think about yourself, I want you to think of yourself with the exact same lens of seeing beauty that you see when you look around in every single person in this room, okay? That's the first thing. 
the second tool, the second tool, because listen, a 14 day, what your weight is, is irrelevant, okay? I want you to remember this, what your weight is, is irrelevant. Here's what's important. We think someone else cares about our weight, so then we hide. We don't apply for the promotion. We don't put ourselves out there and tell the person we want to be more than just friends. We don't get on the dating app. We don't think we're worthy of it, and it's all a lie. And, and, and we don't do it because we think we're going to fail or someone's going to judge us, so we want to avoid that and we stay stuck. Instead, this is the tool. We want to flip it. Okay. This is for everyone in the audience. This is for everyone at home. You want to flip it, and you want to instead focus on this. What has waiting on your weight already cost you in your life, okay? Mm. When we think about what has, right, right? What has it already cost us in our life? What does it cost us in our career? What does it cost us in our love life? What does it cost us in our children seeing us freaking get in a swimsuit yeah. and jiggle our cellulite with joy, right? Yeah. What does it cost us? And right, yeah. and when we think about that, right, Jennifer? When we think about that that, 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 that if we keep living this way, worried about whatever our weight is, if we keep waiting on our weight, what that will cost us, that is way more painful than let me apply for the job and see if they see my value. Let me go for it, okay? okay. So today is the day that it is time to unlearn the lie that your weight determines your worth. All right. All right? Unlearn the lie. Okay. Unlearn the lie. More with Jamie. We'll be right back. We're back with Jamie Kern Lima. Okay, where were we? Where is Jesse? Hello, right here. Hi. Where are you from? I'm from Richmond, California. Okay. Mm -hmm. And tell us a little bit about yourself. Oh, I'm a first generation uh, college student. I'm the first in my family to go to college. I'm graduating in May. And it's literally. <laughs> It's literally my dream to work in a place like this, so wink, wink, any, please hire me. Uh-oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, so the question I want to ask is, you know, it's, it's a male-dominated uh, industry, so as a woman of color, how do, how do I find the confidence and stay encouraged, especially in a leadership role, like a, being a director, it's my dream to be a director and producer. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll, I'll let Jennifer answer, too. One thing I'll say is that every industry and everyone I know has faced a lot of no's in their journey. That's true. So, right, if you hear no along the way, do not take that as any indication nope. of your potential, right? One thing I like to tell myself is, okay, rejection's God's protection. He's blocking my value from someone. Yes. They're not assigned to my destiny. Um, you know, and, and I'll also just brag about Miss Jennifer for a second, because to get to, to get seventh place on American Idol, which is amazing, Thank you. And, and, and get and get and get sent home, right? Yes, right? I <laughs> Nobody can tell Jennifer Hudson to go home. And then she comes <laughs> right back, wins an Oscar and an Emmy and a Tony and a, and a Grammy, right? So I just want to share because I just think when we see what's possible, then when we face no's or we face hard times. Uh, uh, we're less likely to think, oh, there's something about me. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, no, this comes with the territory. Yes, it does. And did you say you want to be a director? Yeah, a director or a producer. I look up to you, Jennifer, as Thank well, you. as a fellow woman of color in the industry, and you're, you're a success story, so I look up to you a lot. Thank you so much for that, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what I would say is this. Um, it is going to be so important. The, the odds, for sure, you're exactly right about the odds. Mm -hmm. um, when I see you and I see how you just stood up up there, I think you are born to defy the odds. That's the first thing. Yes. And, <laughs> right, right? It's in her. <laughs> and I think, um, I think step one of that, Yessie, is doing everything in your power to believe you are worthy of walking into every room, of asking for the opportunity, right, of raising your hand, of saying, pick me, of saying, I'm worthy of applying for this job. So I have an idea, Jennifer, if you're okay with this. What you got? Uh, I had the gift of meeting Jennifer's incredible team walking in here today, including including her director, yes. her director Ken Cooper. So, do you think it'd be so? Ken Cooper, can we have Yessi? Can we have Yessi come sit next to you for the rest of the yes, entire I show? I can answer that. Yes, 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 yes. yes. come on, girl. Let's we just show you better than we can tell you. Come on, Yessi. I like that idea. You like that idea? Yeah. Yeah. Right here. And we have a headset for you. Put the headset on so you can hear everything. 
and ready one, and take one, and then this is the view of what I look at every single day. These are all the monitors that show mm -hmm. the show, and ready seven, take seven. And you know, these are all really just tools that I have, because the great thing about my job as the director, the thing that I love is getting to be a storyteller. Mm -hmm. And we at the Jennifer Hudson Show love to tell stories about human connectivity. Yes. Mm -hmm. Stories like yours, mm -hmm. stories like Jamie's. Mm -hmm. And everything here, ready one, take one, like I said, these are just tools to help us tell the story. Ready seven, take seven. But what really tells the story are all the people behind the scenes mm -hmm. that work on the show, that make it happen. Working with Jennifer, working with me, working with all of these amazing yes. people. It takes a village. And that's the best part of my job. Yes, it right? is, and he's great at it. This is amazing. You're speaking it, and it's already happening. Mm -hmm. It's manifesting right before your eyes. Look yes, at you, you in the whole TV show production that's room. Right. Hey, you heard the Jennifer Hudson show. Audience, yes. 36, take six, yeah, ready seven, and take seven. Take seven. <laughs> take seven. <laughs> Look at and that. so worthy of this chair. Yes, and if you come here, you can go even further. All right, this we support amazing. you here, okay? Thank you guys so Keep much. Keep up Absolutely. the great Thank work. Thank you for that, Believe kid. You. My pleasure. And Team J. Hood in the house. Jamie's Book Worthy is available everywhere books are sold. We'll be right back, y'all. Music. Woo! Everybody dissolve the camera one and dissolve the one and do it behind you. You can see that camera right there. Now, y'all know I love my beauty routine and I always wanted to create my very own lipstick. So, I invited the talented cosmetic chemist, Javon Ford, to help me out. Take a look. Uh -huh. So here we have this gorgeous shade of purple we're going to end up adding to this base over here. Nice. This base is made up of um, castor oil, uh, beeswax, candelia wax, all the waxes. And then last step is this pearl powder called mica that will give it a nice satin sheen that we want in a good solid lipstick. So tell me where we start and what's the process. What okay. I got to do? Can I help out? Yes, you can. So give this a quick stir. Okay. We'll stir it on up. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to move over here a little bit. All right. It's starting to smoke, so we're going to turn that down. I'm checking the temperature real quick. Safety first. I feel like I'm in a real lab, y'all. This is awesome. <laughs> temperature is good. So you're gonna fold that, it's called a weigh boat. Fold the weigh boat and like... Fold it up? Wait, did I do it? Wait, how you do it? Yeah, like this. I don't wanna break it. So you're gonna fold it like this. Okay. That way it's easier for it to like scrape in. So you put it in there? Mm-hmm. We're gonna add it to the base. Oh, you would want you like me to do, to do the it? honors? Yes, I would like to do the honors. Y'all think I could do this? Hold on, you let me this? fold it on up. <laughs> I want my purple lip. <laughs> okay. And then, mm-hmm. All of it? All of it. Y'all gonna get y'all Jennifer <laughs> purple. And then I'm gonna Look grab... Look at these lips. I need the... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I put this back here? Yeah. All right. And lastly, we're going to grab the little pearl powder over here. The pearl powder. I mm -hmm. like that name. So does the pearl powder make it pearl? It gives it a nice satin sheen. It helps it feel softer on the lips. Dump it in there. Yeah. How many of y'all gonna be at home trying to be a scientist to do this? They're gonna be like, Jennifer, what is you in here doing? Child, making my lip. <laughs> okay. So, give that a quick stir. Just to make sure everything's fully incorporated. Because we want a nice, solid color. We don't want any patchiness or streakiness. You deserve the best. That's right. <laughs> And then we just pour it into the mold. So let's bring it by you. Okay. I'm gonna let you do it because my hands are stained. And then stained. I'm gonna pour it in, in these little slots. <laughs> mm -hmm. One by one, and don't be afraid if it pours over because we can scrape that off. Ooh. Uh oh. That means we got plenty of lipstick, y'all. Hold the line. I want you to have a purple lip, you to have a purple lip, <laughs> me to have a purple lip. This is so cool. And then once that's all filled, we let that sit in the fridge for like 20 minutes to solidify and get nice and hard. And then after it's all solid, it'll look, look like that. this. That's my lip. Mm -hmm. Look at that lip. And would you like to fill one? Y'all better oh, get y'all Jennifer and lip. Y'all, let's say J Hood. Hope a <laughs> lot. J Hood purple. So roll it up. And then I put it in here. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna roll it up. Put it over, like perfectly center it. Roll it all the way up. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. If y'all can't find me, I'm in the house making Push my it new down. lip. I'm always getting into and something. And pull it out. And you have 
This is the coolest thing I've ever seen. Y'all, it just went on down. Look at this. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.